Hello, welcome to the second video on adjoint sensitivity analysis. Um, in, this is, in this video, I will be discussing uh, frequency domain techniques. Um, and uh, this, these techniques are usually used in numerical electromagnetic applications. Um, and uh, I will show you in this lecture how to get the adjoint sensitivities of a general objective function. Okay, so um, the system that we usually will consider in this problem is something of the form Z, Z multiplying I is equal to V, where Z, Z, this matrix here is, is called the impedance matrix uh, in some high-frequency applications such as the method of moments or finite element for high-frequency applications. They call it sometimes the stiffness matrix um, in low-frequency applications. The vector i is a vector of responses. Uh, it represents uh, the currents. If we are talking about method of moments, it represents the fields. If we are talking about finite element method, uh, if for magnetostatic applications, uh, this could be the vector of uh, magnetic vector potential values, and v is the vector of excitation. The matrix Z is in general is in general complex, and it's function of our parameters, the vector parameters x. And this, these parameters they could represent the material properties of different parts of the domain. It can represent different dimensions and so on. Uh, usually this system is, is pretty large for most practical applications. And our target is uh, to use uh, this, um, this, to try to find an adjoint approach to get the sensitivity of a general objective function. So it, just to summarize, x is a vector of parameters, geometrical material parameters. Uh, I is a vector of state variables, responses, could be currents, service currents, if you are talking about negative moments, it could be fields, if we are talking magnetic vector potentials for high frequency applications, it could be magnetic vector potential if we are talking about uh, low frequency applications. V is a vector of excitation. We have a general objective function F, it's a function of X and I. Now, F could have both explicit and implicit dependence on I. Uh, for example, um, F could be something like this. F could be, I can write it like um, x1 squared uh, plus some integral, say, from 0 to infinity, uh, multiplying, uh, say, the current I, uh, I star dt, something like that, okay? So uh, here, and this is just an example I'm trying to, to create now, now just to illustrate the idea. So this this objective function f has an explicit dependence on the parameter x1, because x1 appears explicitly in the objective function. It has an implicit dependence through i, the vector of responses, because i uh, is also a function of all the parameters x, x1, x2, x3, and so on. So, uh, so when you get the derivative of f relative to any parameter, you can have an explicit part. In this case, going to be two x1. And you have an implicit part, which is the derivative of the of this function relative to i, multiplied the derivative of i relative to x. So, uh, so just keep this in mind. Uh, this this vector f can ha can can have many meanings in different applications. Uh, for example, high frequency applications that could be the input impedance, it could be the s parameters. Um, low frequency applications could be the torque, the torque rebels. Um, and uh, if photonics application could be a reflectivity, uh, transmission, and so on. So in different disciplines, it have different meanings. But just keep in mind that F can have both explicit dependence on the parameters and the implicit dependence through the vector of responses I. Okay, extremely important to remember that. I will go over the derivation of the adjoint variable method here for this application because it's very really pretty simple here. So we have we start with the system uh, zi zi equal to v. We start with this system and these both are matrices. Uh, z z is the is the uh, is the stiffness ma stiffness matrix or the impedance matrix. It's n by n. I is n by one. V is n by one. This matrix in general complex. It's a function of all our parameters, x, okay? So if we differentiate both sides here relative to the ith parameter, as shown here, we can keep i constant and differentiate z, and then we keep z constant and then differentiate i. 
and uh, the vector of excitation in most applications it's not really a function of the parameters but in general it could have some dependence so we can write this one here as partial v partial xi now we are going to remove this term to the other side and multiply by the inverse of the matrix z and here we, we assume that the impedance matrix or the uh, stiffness matrix is invertible so this gives me an expression for the derivative of the vector of state variables, the vector of responses, relative to the ith parameter. We have an objective function called f. Okay, we get our objective function called f. And this f is a f, and this f is a function of both x and i. So it can have an explicit dependence on x and implicit dependence on x through i. Extremely important to remember this. So when we differentiate f relative to the ith parameter, we write the explicit dependence in the previous example with b2x1, okay? Plus partial f partial i transpose partial i partial xi. Um, and what you're going to do, you're going to replace here partial i, this, the derivative of the state variables related to the ith parameter from this expression here, okay? So we will replace this one by this expression. And then we combine these two terms, we call them i hat. This is partial f partial i, transpose z minus 1 is equal to i hat. Let's, take the let's call this one i hat transpose, actually, because this will have to be a row vector. We call this one here, this product, a row vector i hat transpose. Okay, so we take this term here, and we call it i hat transpose. Let's take the transpose of, uh, of both sides. And the transpose of the inverse is the inverse of the transpose. We can multiply by z transpose both sides. You obtain this expression here. Okay, we call this one here the adjoint system. It is called the adjoint system. It's, a, it's another numerical simulation. It's impedance matrix or its stiffness matrix is the transpose of the original matrix z. Okay. And the excitation here is partial f partial i. It's very important to remember it's partial f partial i. Um, for example, uh, i is a vector that has n components. So this partial f partial i is a vector that will have also n components, where the, uh, the, the kth component is a derivative relative to the response i k. Okay, so we can calculate that. This could be calculated very easily. So if you solve i, if you have, if you solve the original system and you got i, and you solve this adjoint system, you got i tilde. This term here is called the i tilde. Then the derivative, I can write here the derivative to any parameter xi in this form. Why is this term what is this form so unique? Because if you know uh, if you know i, if you know the vector i, which is the solution of the original system. And you know the vector i hat, which is solution of the adjoint system. We know partial v partial xi. It should be known because we know what's our excitation. It's not analyt analytically. We know the derivative of the impedance matrix relative to all our parameters analytically. We can calculate that. Then all really what you need is uh, i and the i tilde to get all the sensitivities relative to xi. So in other words, we needed only one extra simulation, which is this one. This is the adjoint simulation. So what we do, we solve zi equal to v to get the original response. We, did, we solve z transpose i hat equal to partial v partial i to get the adjoint response. With using these two responses, this whole expression is known for any xi. We can calculate the complete gradient regardless of the number of its components. Because, as I said, this is known analytically. The derivative of the component of the matrix Z relative to XI are known analytically. So we don't really have to do an extra simulation for this. Okay, let's consider an example. We have here um, an AC circuit. Um, it has a source resistance, a load resistance, uh, capacitor C1, capacitor C2, inductor L1, inductor L2. And so we have here in general six parameters in this circuit, okay? Our target is to find the sensitivities of the input impedance with respect to all these parameters using the frequency domain adjoint method that I just explained. Okay, now one or two things that should be that are worth mentioning. 
first if this excitation vector is one angle zero so I'm gonna take this Vs to be one angle zero okay it's just a sinusoidal signal with zero with zero angle then the input impedance is by definition it is the division of this voltage by uh, by the current drawn from it by the current I1 we we are gonna use here loop analysis so this is called I1 this is called I2 this is called I3 this is called I4 we're gonna use loop analysis and uh, our state parameters are I1 I2 I3 and I4 okay so the input impedance you can really write it in this form you can say that Zn okay is equal to one angle zero divided by um, I1 this is my objective function this is f and f could be a complex quantity so what is i need the adjoint excitation and the excitation is partial f partial i by the vector i but how many i's do we have we have here four of these state variables we have i1 we have i2 we have i3 we have i4 so only in the first component we're gonna get one over i1 squared so this this vector here i can write it in this form Maybe I can use the black ones better, choose better. It's going to be here uh, minus 1 over i1 squared. And because this f is not a function of i2, i3, and i4, the rest of the components are going to be zeros. And you take the transpose of all of this. So this term here is, the, is our adjoint excitation. It is the derivative of f relative to the state variables and remember here f is 1 over i1 so it's only a function of the first state variable so when i differentiate i get minus 1 over i1 squared and the rest are zeros so we write we write the uh, loop and uh, loop equations governing each one of them okay we obtain a system of equations of the form z i equal to v and then we try to solve the vector i we can do that um, to solve for the currents uh, using matrix inversion or any other iterative technique okay and then we construct the adjoint system whose matrix is the transpose of the original impedance matrix or the original or the, or the original stiffness matrix okay I wrote here the loop analysis equations for each loop this is loop number one okay loop number two loop number three loop number four okay so i wrote the loop equations my unknowns are the currents i1 i2 i3 and i4 so these are my state variables so this is the form z matrix z multiplying the vector i is equal to the vector v we can solve this by matrix inversion because all these parameters are known rs is known c1 is known l1 is known and so on uh, zl1 is g omega l1 zc1 is 1 over g omega c1 so I know all this matrix. I know all the components of this matrix uh, uh, analytically. So we, the adjoint system is a system formed by taking the transpose of this matrix. And because this matrix, this matrix is going to remain the same. And then now this is the current I here. And here I'm going to say minus Vs over I1 squared. Here I assume that my source, um, in general, it is it, it's not one angle zero. It can be Vs. So I left it as it is. It can be any complex number, really. Uh, so I leave it as it is like that, but in most applications, um, it, you usually take the, uh, the source as, as a reference. Um, so what will be our uh, sensitivity? Sensitivity here is the derivative of the input, our targets to get uh, the sensitivities of Z in relative to all the parameters. We have how many parameters? Six of them. Okay, how, what is Z in? Z in is by definition is Vs over I1, okay, over the first state variable. So, if we go uh, to the formula that we derived earlier, we can see that this is how the expression relative to each parameter is going to look like. How did we end up with this one? Well, the vector, v, the vector of excitation Vs here is not function of any of the parameters, not function of, on, on, uh, on, uh, is, not, is not dependent on Rs, or R L or C one C two L one L two. So th th there was a term here partial V partial X I. This is gonna be zero. Okay. So you have here but minus partial Z I bar over X I. I can take because I bar is a constant. I can take it out from the derivative, and I end up with this one here. Remember that this term I can write it again here. This was written before as partial 
زد اي بار بارشل اكس اي اوكي اند ان ذس كيس اي كان سيمبلي تيك اي بار اوت اوكي فروم ذا ديريفيتيف بيكوز اي بار از سيمبلي ذا فاليو اوف اي at the solution it's a constant it's a constant vector is not dependent on the parameters um, so uh, if i do that i obtain this expression the expression shown here okay so what does this expression tell me you want to get the sensitivity of uh, zn relative to any parameter very simple you already solve this system here determine its solution this will give you the vector i bar okay i bar here is the nominal solution of the original system solve this system here Okay, to get the vector i tilde, this is the vector i, t uh, sorry, not i tilde, i hat. This is the vector i hat, okay? So we have this one here. Partial z partial x i, it is the derivative of this matrix relative to the ith parameter. If this parameter is r s, we can differentiate every component relative to r s. This is probably the only one is going to give me 1. If this is, was c, then this 1 over g omega c, its derivative relative to c will give me minus 1 over g omega c 1 squared, and so on. So I can determine this matrix. And this matrix, by the way, will be in general sparse. In other words, be mainly zeros because only few of the components are dependent on any parameter. Okay, this is, this is usually in the case of most of the applications we can try. We can calculate this matrix partial z partial xi relative to all the six parameters. We can have it analytically. So we, we, after we got i hat, after we got i bar, we multiply them, and in the middle we have bar minus partial z partial xi. This is going to give me all the sensitivities of the uh, input impedance of the system. So this is really, the, in essence, the, the adjoint system for the frequency domain. Solve the original problem, get its, its solution, we call it here i bar. Solve the adjoint problem, get its solution, we call it i hat. Using i bar and i hat, and the analytical derivatives of the impedance matrix calculate the sensitivities. Only one extra simulation, which is this one, which is required to calculate I hat, will be used to get you all the sensitivities. Even if you have one million circuit component, it doesn't matter. All of them are, are going to be obtained using only one simulation. So I executed this uh, problem, and the code can be found in my book uh, for, for, for carrying out this problem here. Um, and I, uh, you can see this is, I'm comparing for you the adjoint sensitivities relative to these six parameters and the central finite difference sensitivities. Adjoint sensitivities require only one extra simulation. CFD is going to require 12 extra circuit analyses because you have to perturb each parameter in the forward direction and then you solve the system. You perturb it in the backward direction and then you solve the system again. You can see that the, the match pretty well. Um, all the all the maybe to the third or fourth digit, you start to get some difference between uh, the original uh, the adjoint sensitivities and CFD, uh, but the cost is really uh, one over twelve of the of the CFD, and of course if you have a huge number of sim if, of parameters and the fine simulation takes long time. This the gain that the, the computational gain that you achieve from using this, this method can become very large. While I used to illustrate the, the illustrate this method just a simple circuit me, uh, approach, um, this approach is really applicable to many many areas in electromagnetism. We used it in my group uh, in mood matching. Uh, mood matching is a technique where it's, it's mainly, it mainly applies to waveguides, uh, structures of this sort. So you divide your structure into a number of sections and you write modal expansions, okay? And then you try to match the moods at the, at the interface. It usually results in a system of equations, complex system of equations, very similar to the one that we, we saw in that circuit. And we can, from this uh, system of equations, we can get the sensitivity of the different modes. We can determine sensitivities of the S parameters and so on. And one of my, uh, my boss docs at the time, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Sabag, he's now in a, a professor in one of the American universities. Uh, he, he's the one who helped us achieve this result in 2006, and we had that work published. So here I'm showing you sensitivities of the real, real part of uh, S11 and S21, okay? Um, uh, in this case, 
obtained using the adjoint, we call it adjoint network method or adjoint variable method, both are the same. And the central finite difference is CD, central difference is here. Uh, perfect match, perfect match is obtained over a wide range of frequency, okay? And this is for the real part, this is for the imaginary part, and here um, the obtained, this is parameter, this is sensitivity relative to parameter L1, this is sensitivity, uh, the imaginary relative to L1, this is the real relative to another parameter here, I think it's L6, and this is the imaginary of L6, because our objective function here is the S parameters, and the S parameters are complex numbers. So they have real and the imaginary, and we have S11, the reflection uh, term, and S21, the transmission, the S parameter for transmission. Uh, you can see there is perfect match, perfect match achieved between uh, the adjoint method and the central finite differences over wide range of frequencies. One thing I should mention that this impedance matrix Z is a function of frequency. So um, so you, you, may, you may require, and, and this is maybe the case in some applications, to carry out one simulation per frequency for the same set of parameters. Another application which we started uh, to do some work on recently in collaboration with our colleagues in uh, McMaster Auto, Auto Resource Center, Mark, is to get is to use is to get adjoint sensitivities of switched reluctance motors and use them to design these motors. So our target here is to calculate sensitivity of the torque and the torque cable and the torque um, the average torque relative to the properties of each one of these elements. So we can have tens of thousands of these elements. So our gradient vector have tens of thousands of components. But yet the adjoint variable method is able to tell you how your response is going to change if you change the properties of any one of these, of these elements. Or if you change any of the dimensions, like this is one tooth here of the rotor, okay? If you change maybe the length of this tooth, how it's going to change and so on. So we can calculate all of this for switched reluctance motors. And I should mention that here, uh, the matrix, the Z matrix, they call it here the stiffness matrix. Uh, and the vector I that we solve for is really the vector of the magnetic vector potential at each one of these nodes in the computational domain. So it's a huge vector, usually. These are some of the results we published with my, uh, with my student, Dr. Ehab Sayed, who just graduated recently. And these were published in 2019, just a few months ago. Uh, we got sensitivities of the torque relative to different uh, geometrical parameters using AVM and CFD. And you can look this up in the literature. Um, and uh, here for this for different positions. And we got also sensitivity of the flux linkage relative to uh, different parameters, different uh, heights and widths and so on. And uh, we did it here uh, for different uh, rotor angles. Uh, perfect match was achieved between CFD and uh, the central and the, and the AVM method. Um, and we use these sensitivities even for optimization. We used it for gradient-based optimization and we used it for topology optimization. For topology optimization, what we do we try to determine um, the sensitivity, say, of the torque relative to the, uh, re I can call it the permeability of each one of these elements. So we have a huge number of elements in the domain. We get sensitiv sensitivity of our torque or average torque relative to each one, the, 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 the uh, permeability of each one of them. Okay, and then we determine if we can select some of these elements and convert them to air. We're trying to create what we call um, flux barriers. Uh, flux usually try to avoid these areas, and uh, we were able to do that, and we published a number of papers, and we got very interesting, interesting shapes. They are all usually uh, regular shapes for these, uh, for these air gaps, and you can use them to control the value of your torque. Uh, so we are playing with that still, and we're trying to achieve uh, the best possible result for this application. 